Hi, I'm Ben Mullen from the Biodiversity Information Service. We are the local environmental record centre for Powys and the Brecon Beacons National Park. I'm here at Langorse Lake in the Black Mountains area of the Brecon Beacons National Park and I'm going to meet up with Keith Noble who is a very knowledgeable person on dragonflies and damselflies and we'll see what we can find today here at Langos Lake. This is a lovely sheltered corner. Lots of damselflies here and a spotted flycatcher too. The damselflies have been a year in the water and when they reach their final stage, having gone through several changes of skin as they grow up, they will just hold themselves until they get the right sort of day. It's something between day length and warmth. And then they will tend to all emerge together. And that's much more successful as a strategy for breeding than if they came in, in dribs and drabs. And so we've got this lucky afternoon when after some very wet days, it's all happening. The sun has brought them all out. My name is Keith Noble, I'm the Dragonfly Record for Breckenshire, uh, the Vice County 42 for recording purposes. I'm at Langorse Lake, which is one of my favourite places. It's a great sp spot for all sorts of wildlife. Much of it is site of special scientific interest and it's very well managed by the National Park and the local people and those who farm it here. I've come down here for dragonflies on a warm afternoon because that's very much the best time to look for them and we're lucky to have this day after a period of wet weather so there'll be lots of damselflies emerging in mid-May. I'm looking here because this piece of hedgerow is very well sheltered and it's catching the sun and we've got newly emerged damselflies uh, it will take several days to develop, get their full colours and become sexually mature, but they can hang about here in the warmth and that's very vital for insects. Earlier this morning I came out and I couldn't find a dandelfly at all. Now I'm seeing several here in the hedge because it has warmed up and that, that's very important for them. This one is a male common blue, but it isn't blue. The bits that will become blue are now pink, so it's freshly emerged and also before they warm up properly their colours don't come through. But this will be a very blue and black one uh, when it's in full colour. This is a red-eyed damselfly, just beginning to get its colour in the eyes and the body. So it's not been long out, but the eyes are just starting to turn orange and they'll go a lovely deep red when it's a bit older. One thing that makes red-eyed damselflies special is that they tend to sit out on the lily pads here. And when they're mature, they'll use that as a hunting base and they'll go out and catch other small insects to eat. Of course, dragonflies throughout their life are predatory. They've done it underwater, eating other mini beasts. And then when they come out as adults, they're, they're hunting flies again. On the lily pad here is a damselfly nymph, the larva, that's just emerging and it's likely to climb up one of these reed stems. Ready to turn. 
turn into an adult, which will last a few days, a few weeks, just enough time to breed and set the cycle all going again. Train course has been picking up new dragonflies over a period of oh, the last 10 years and the species totally is now up to 21, so we've got a real hot spot for dragonflies here. And probably the reason why we're getting new ones is that dragonfly populations are expanding north and west, um, and that's a result of climate change. This is a larva. It has been in the water for about a year and it's come up onto a lily pad and will climb up onto one of the reed stems so that it can turn into an adult dragonfly, um, a damselfly in this case, and be ready to uh, fly and mate and reproduce. It's been through about 10 or 14 stages while it was underwater. Each time it has to grow bigger, it must split its skin um, and grow a new sort of exoskeleton, which holds it all together, having no bones inside it. Um, and in the final stage, it's reached what is virtually the adult about to come out. And it will put this off for a time so that when the right day length and the right warmth comes along, all these damselflies are going to emerge together and then they will develop um, and synchronize their breeding that way. This damselfly has emerged. You can see its larval empty skin above it. It hasn't attained any colour yet. It's very hard to identify which species. Um, but within about an hour, those wings which have been pumped up with body fluid and the long abdomen which has expanded will start to get its colour and then it will be able to fly. And while it's maturing, it'll leave the water. It'll go into the fields and the hedgerows where it is safer and there's less competition from other insects um, until in a few days, given decent weather, it'll be ready to come back to the water where the females will be ready to lay eggs and the males to mate with them. And there'll be, then be a lot of competition when they're fully grown and ready for it. And here we found three together. Uh, at the bottom is an exuvia, an empty case, where the damselfly has come out. Halfway up is a variable damselfly. That will turn blue in due course. Um, if it's a male, it will have a lot of blue. If it's a female, it'd be largely black with blue and green markings. And above it, a different damselfly. That's a red-eyed damselfly. So we've got different species all emerging because that was a particularly good afternoon. Here's a red-eyed damselfly. This is an interesting one because it only reached Tangorse Lake in 2017. So this is one of the new species which has been coming in and it is part of a general expansion across Britain. And some new species have crossed the channel in recent years and are moving through the country. So this is the red-eyed damselfly. There's also a small red-eyed damselfly, uh, which is a recent colonist, and that is just moving into Wales. So I don't think it'll be too long before we get the small red-eyed damselfly as well at Fangorse Lake and elsewhere in mid Wales. Now, that doesn't look blue at all, but that is indeed a common blue damselfly, but it's freshly emerged and it hasn't got its colour yet. The way you pick out a common blue is that on the top of the thorax, that's the middle part between the head and the abdomen, of course, is a very broad pale stripe. And if you look on the side of the thorax, it's pretty plain. There's no obvious dark markings there. So that's a very good way of picking out common blue. Common blue is very widespread. Um, wherever there are damselflies, you're likely to find this one. It also has a long flying season, so they'll come out now, but they'll last uh, well into the late summer. There we are. Yes. Right. 
And this is another similar blue damselfly. And here it is in full color. This is a little later in the year. And we've got an azure damselfly. But look at this one and on the thorax, the top stripe is much thinner. And there's a little dark mark below it, a sort of spur. And that distinguishes azure damselfly uh, from common blue. The other places to look are the top segments of the abdomen, where it meets the thorax, and the bottom end. On common blue, it would have two clear blue segments, whereas on this one, we've got a dark mark down at that bottom end. So looking at these details is the way you distinguish some of these damselflies. I find it very helpful to have binoculars, or even better, a camera, because with a picture, you can take your time and really examine it closely. And here's the hairy dragonfly we found. There's a nice story behind this. When the Brecknock Wildlife Trust was founded in 1964, in their first newsletter, the first chairman uh, wrote a paper on dragonflies in Breconshire, and he gave a list of the ones that he had found. And among them was hairy dragonfly. And that was 1964. It wasn't mentioned again in the county until 50 years later, when at the time we were celebrating the anniversary, hairy dragonfly turned up again at Fangorse Lake. Now, had it been there all the time or had it gone away and moved in again? But anyway, we now have hairy dragonfly on the local list. And if you look closely, you actually see it's quite fuzzy. We were very lucky yesterday afternoon in that with this big emergence of all the damselflies, the hobbies were hunting. Hobbies come to us from South Africa. They're here for the summer. They migrate with swallows and martins, which give them some food on the journey. And when they get here, one of their favorite places to feed is over water bodies where there are lots of flying insects. And we were watching five of them circling around above us while we were recording yesterday. And they will take food by stretching out their feet and grabbing it in the air. They are wonderful flyers, very exciting to watch. And beautifully marked, look at the checkered feathers on the underwing there and the stripes along the flanks. And I didn't get a good picture of a hobby actually catching a damselfly, but if you look closely there, it's got its legs stretched out ready and go over to the left of the picture and you might just make out what it's after. So those are some of the things we saw on our visit to Shangors Lake but I'm going to go on to look at other dragonflies which are coming out at this time. May is a good time. Late May, a lot of things are emerging. June is a peak month for the early dragonflies when they're all flying. This is a broad body chaser, a golden, uh, rather fat looking dragonfly, very distinctive. This you'll find in all sorts of places. Often people see these in their gardens, especially if they've got a pond, and a pond in a garden is of course a great idea. So that's the broad body chaser, and it does what, what it says on the tin. It will chase after other insects, and they will chase each other too, competing for their little stretch of shoreline that they mark out as their territory where they're going to breed. And here's the male, a lovely shade of pale blue. And at the same time, we get four spotted chaser. Sometimes if you find a good pond like the one up by the cattle grid on Menethichlid above Brecon, you'll find good numbers of these in the middle of the summer. Uh, you can count the spots. You can make it four if you like. You might make it eight. But anyway, that's called the four spotted chaser. And I'll just mention a couple of others. I've looked at dragonflies and damselflies that you find generally on still water. But they're two that are specialists in flowing water. So these are ones you might look at in the Usk Valley and the Wye Valley. Uh, one of the places I like to go is the Warren at Hay-on-Wye. 
but you can find them along the footpaths or along the rivers. This one is the beautiful demoiselle, metallic with all dark wings. And this is the female. She's green and has brown wings. And these you can find on riverside vegetation and the males will be flirting using those coloured wings to compete for the, the attention of the females. And this is a very similar banded demoiselle, but look at the wings. Instead of all dark, we've got big black blotches and the same metallic blue body. So these are ones to look out along the rivers. To find out more about dragonflies and particularly to identify the damsels and dragonflies, a very good book is Britain's Dragonflies. I've shown a picture of it here. This is the second edition. It's now in its fourth edition. It's illustrated with wonderful photos. It's not expensive. And if you're interested in dragonflies and haven't got a field guide yet, I would recommend that one. And if you really want to get into it seriously, then you'll want to identify the larvae that are living in the water and the exuviae, the empty cases when they come out. So I've got there the two volume version. There is now a one volume version that tells you how to do this. This will take quite a bit of careful examination, but it's important to know that these damselflies and dragonflies are not just present, but they have actually bred in a place. And the exuvia, the empty case is the proof um, and the way you can actually have a specimen to show that it has bred there. For more information, there's an excellent dragonfly website. The British Dragonfly Society has its website, british-dragonflies.org.uk, where you can find more about identification, um, about where the insects live, about their conservation, and I've just mentioned one place that I like to go to, but I know this is going out across Wales and there are many, many other good sites. So the way to find those is to go on the British Dragonfly Society website. On the top line, find Get Involved. And under that, you will find where to see dragonflies. Click on that, you bring up a map with all sorts of pointers. And right across Wales, you can find many good sites to visit with instructions how to get there, what you're going to see, put together with the help of the county dragonfly recorders. So I hope you'll have a good summer and enjoy seeing lots of damselflies and dragonflies.